Good morning, everybody. Did you know that it has been one year of ownership with this Benelli? So I thought I'd take it out this morning and give you my thoughts, feelings, experience, and what's to come after one year of ownership. I also thought it'd be a good idea to take this out because, well, honestly, I haven't really ridden it in the last six weeks or so. Kind of got a little overexcited with the CRF, but it's a new toy, so you know, you always give the new toys the most attention, don't you? But Benelli TNT 135, can you believe that we've had this for over a year now? So let's take a step back here and talk stats. This bike in particular is a 2021 Benelli TNT 135. The TNT 135 has been around for a little while now. It's, I think it was originally released in 2017. And this is basically the exact same as the original. They haven't done any changes that I can think of except for maybe plastics, colors, and graphics. But I don't really think they need to because here's the other stats. The engine is a 135cc. My condolences to our European folks that only get the 125s. Single piston four stroke. It's got a single overhead cam, four valves, and dual spark as well. This engine packs a whopping 11 horsepower, double digits, and seven pound-feet of torque. You're obviously not gonna win any drag races with this thing out of the box, but that's not what it's intended to do. This is a city runabout. This is low stakes fun at its finest. So as of now, with just over one year of ownership, I have put 1,340 miles on the clock. So I won't bore you with all the details as far as the build of this bike because there are a lot of modifications that I've done to this bike. There's a whole playlist, in fact, you can check it out, see everything that I've done. One other thing to point out about the Benelli, while it's Italian design, it's actually Chinese built. So one of the big questions with this bike is, well, reliability, how is it? Chinese bikes have had kind of a reputation over the last few years, but this is the exception to the rule. A lot of those Chinese brands, and I will kind of poke at the uh, the Grom clones that I've seen over the years, and even the, uh, the kind of sister bike to this, the SSR Rascal, are very, very cheaply done. They're carbureted bikes. They are kickstart bikes. They're, you know, using very, very old technology. This, on the other hand, is fuel injected, and it does have a lot of quality pieces to it. It's well built. In the year that I've owned it, I've not had a single malfunction or error. Nothing. Nothing mechanical. Nothing electrical. It just runs. It does what it's supposed to do. And even if I have it sitting in the garage for, you know, a couple months or something like that, I can still reliably pull out the bike, turn it on, it'll start up every time. It won't sputter, it won't give me check engine lights. It's just been absolutely 100% reliable. So the other question with these bikes are, is it really the Grom killer that it claims to be? Objectively, yeah, it is. I mean, it, obviously it's a 135cc compared to the 125cc, so it's got more displacement from the Grom, so it's got more horsepower than the Grom. That's a big, big difference, especially with these tiny bikes. Every little horsepower counts. And in prior years, I would have said the other thing it has to its advantage is five gears as opposed to four gears. However, the Grom has responded with that. They do now have a five speed, but they didn't for the longest time. My Grom doesn't have five speeds. It is very nice, even with the small bikes like this, to have that fifth gear. If I remember correctly, it does not beat the Grom in torque, but I think it makes up for it with that one or two extra horsepower. And the other part about being a Grom killer is the price. This is what, $800 or so less than the Grom? Even though they recently upped the MSRP on this, when I bought it, it was originally MSRP at $2,499, now it's $2,999. So it's becoming less of a point in favor of the Benelli, but it is still significantly cheaper and you are seeming to get a lot more bang for your buck. I think to the Benelli's downfall, the only thing I can think of when comparing it to the Grom is that the fit and finish is just a little bit nicer on the Grom.
gotta love the sound. So I thought it'd be a good idea in summing this bike up of one year of ownership to kind of look back at my experience and give you my three loves and my three hates with this. I think that could give you a, a good understanding of what you could expect with a bike like this yourself. We'll start with the negatives just to get them out of the way. And the first one is plastics and fitment there. It is just so finicky, these plastics to get on and off. It takes forever. There's way too many fasteners and everything doesn't quite line up as you would expect. Like even just taking it off one or two times, you'll find that putting it on the third time, it doesn't quite line up. A few instances like this, the front dash right here, these two bolts are really hard to get in place. The bolt down at the bottom corner here does not fit at all anymore. I have no idea why. And the whole rear, don't even get me started. There's like, there's probably literally a dozen bolts alone on the lower shroud underneath the seat. The second thing I dislike about this is the weight. This is a really heavy bike for being as small as it is. It's not that heavy and probably lighter compared to most street bikes, but if you compare it to the Grom, this thing is a heavyweight and it really shows. Third hate with this is going to be the fitment of the accessories and items attached to the engine. They are impossible to get to. And I've had a few instances where you have to take off one, two, three different things just to get to one single item. Things that come up to mind are the cam chain tensioner is really difficult to get to. The air box was a huge endeavor just to pull that thing out because it's so tightly fit. I don't know how they assemble this thing in the factory, but they must attach everything to the engine and then shove it into the frame because everything is so tight. But now let's get into some love, some things that I love about this bike. Number one is going to be the styling. Even though it's Chinese built, this is Italian design. It's an Italian company and boy does it show. It's the dual exhaust tips, the rear integrated tail light and blinkers, the front, the angular design, everything about it just is so nice so italian Mwah. second is going to be the engine and the gearbox in this they are really really nice it's got really good response throughout the rev range although it's particularly very very happy to be above six or seven grand i think that's where it shines the gear ratios are also really good i think the response is pretty linear throughout the entire gearbox i know a lot of people have said with the new Grom that the fifth gear is just kind of tacked on and isn't quite useful in the way that it's geared. The third thing that I love about this bike is the comfort. While this is a very tiny bike and I'm a very tall person, typically I can get a lot of leg pain or leg cramps on small bikes after extended periods of time. This one, while it's still tiny, it does have a little bit more length on the Grom, a little bit more height on the Grom, so those things combined it allows for a little bit more room and a little bit more comfort with me. It's set up very nicely. The seat is in a very good position. The stock seat foam is actually really nice. It's fairly plushy for what it is. And I don't find myself in as much pain as I would be on the Grom stock seat. Now to sum this up. This is going to be a little interesting because I just thought of like two questions in my head just now. So first one is, knowing everything that I know now, had I had to do everything over again, would I still bought this bike? And the answer to that question is yes, 100%. But the other question that comes to mind is, gun to your head, if you had to pick one between this and the Grom, which would you have? And my answer to that would be Grom. This is a fantastic bike, don't get me wrong, and I think it does actually live up to the name Grom Killer that everyone's been giving it. But I think ultimately it's a subjective opinion on my part. I have a soft spot for the Grom, that's my OG. It's what got me into minis and into the street riding scene. It, it started everything, that was the spark. And I love it for that. The other thing that I will say with the Grom comes the aftermarket, the parts availability, the variety of different ways you can build them out is nearly endless. While you can do some of that stuff with this, it is a little bit more difficult. Aftermarket is still not a strong suit with the Benelli. There are a few that are trying, but 
In the year that I've had this, I haven't really seen much addition to it. Although I will say there are some people that are taking it upon themselves to make items for this bike, which I think is fantastic. I've seen people make uh, 3D printed air boxes. There's people that do full 450 swap kits with this, which is insane. But thankfully right now, there is not a gun to my head. I'm fortunate I can keep both and I will. Well, let's think about the future with this bike. So. There are still a couple of things that I do want to do with this. I think I mentioned this in my fleet update, but I do want to address the headlight. I guess that's the one other thing that I hate about this. The lighting in the front is terrible, but I do still want to address that. I want to make the high beam just a little bit brighter and a little bit wider of a throw. I also have a clutch, a high performance clutch and stiffer springs that are ready to go in as well. I wanna take care of that also pretty soon. I think in closing, I'll also say with a year of ownership with this bike, also kind of more or less comes with a year of this channel. I've had it, you know, for years and years beforehand, but I never actually put effort into it and wanted to document this as well as my other bikes and it kind of turned into what it is now. So I just wanna say a big thank you to people who watch, who subscribe, who do all that good stuff. I know in the past I've gotten a lot of comments saying I'm not very enthusiastic when I speak in my videos and things like that, but it's a comfort thing. I'm not really well suited for talking to a camera. It's something I'm not very good at. I'm getting better at it and this is kind of a learning experience and you're along for the ride. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, if you like what you see here and you wanna get more details about this bike, I have a whole playlist with every single thing that I've done to this from day one with my first impressions all the way up to now and beyond. So thank you so much. Hey, little guy. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week.